everybody, British Bob here, how do you do? Today we're going to be looking at these bevy of beauties. To include this marvel of engineering, the PJ Masks Super Moon Adventure HQ Rocket, which comes with lights and sounds, and a cockpit which holds all three of the PJ Masks. If that's not enough, it also comes with an exclusive Gecko and Moon Rover. And if you have a hectic lifestyle like me, it also comes with a handle so you can play with it on the go. This little chap really seems to like it. Next up we have a trio of new vehicles with the PJ Mass switching to two wheels and also receiving a bonus accessory while they're at it, like our Let's Laptop here. There's a total of three to collect, so why not update your collection today? And of course, in true British Bob style, I'm going to be putting these toys through their paces with space shuttle launches, journeys through wormholes, alien encounters, lunar landings, and plenty of fun and thrills along the way. So join me as I take the PJ Masks on a super moon adventure. Now, before we head off into space, every story has a beginning. And this one is no different. So here we find ourselves outside the PJ Masks headquarters, with a rather unfamiliar sight of local master builder celebrity, Samuel Marcel. Now the reason he's here with a full film crew is because of this. Let me explain. When we went to bed last night, the moon was about the size of a Cadbury's chocolate button. But following a good night's sleep and far too much snoring, we were now looking at a moon of absolutely epic proportions. Just look at the size of it now, boys and girls. Now, don't get us wrong, we don't want to point any fingers, but we have a strong feeling Lunar Girl's behind it all. So let's leave these guys to make their documentary and head on over to the PJ Mask headquarters. Oh, and it looks like that guy's enjoying a cup of tea. A man after my own heart. Ah, lovely, and here we have the PJ Masks making their last minute checks before launch and a rather happy looking PJ Robot, who's been working very hard on making some major modifications to the HQ. What could those be, I wonder? The mind boggles. Anyway, whilst we leave them to do what they need to do, let me talk you through what's going to be happening today. Now, you may or may not be aware, but the rocket function of the HQ is for total disasters and emergencies only. Well, with the moon being out of orbit, this is exactly one of those situations. So the PJ Masks first need to leave Earth by breaking through the atmosphere and propelling themselves into space. From here they will then travel to the moon, try not to crash into its surface, find out why it's out of orbit and so big in the sky, and save the day. Simple! Well, after that brief science lesson, it looks as though Gecko is now ready to take off. And it appears they also have quite an audience. Let's get down there and soak up the atmosphere. The tension in the crowd is electric waiting for this launch, isn't it? Oh, and in front of us we have two very happy chappies on the mission control desk, who sound as though they've just given Gecko clearance for launch. Ladies and gentlemen, we have liftoff! Oh, it's getting a bit hot sat so close to the launch site. And smoky. <laughs> Probably time to join the crowd. <laughs> oh dear. But isn't it lovely to see such an animated crowd? And just look how relaxed the PJ Masks are as they start their ascent. 63 radar contact. I'm left, Roger. PJ Masks, we're on our way! In the night to save the day! Oh, I love the enthusiasm. These guys sound super pumped. But wait, what have we got going on here? Wow, would you look at that? The HQ's actually changing into a rocket ship! This should make the next stage of their journey even safer for them! Now children, it usually takes three days to travel to the moon. But we don't have time for that, so we're taking advantage of the space-time continuum and using a wormhole. But they're a very dangerous way to travel, so I'm holding my breath they make it through here safely. Ah, <sighs> and breathe out. Right, while they're making their descent to the moon, Let's enjoy a little bit of entertainment back on Earth. And 
And here we have a young man trying to make a name for himself. Rocket Boy. Now he's a member of a rather exclusive group of people called the Flat Earth Club. Now as we learn in textbooks, the Earth is round, like this. But he believes the Earth is flat, looking more like this. So to test his theory, he's made a homemade rocket and he's going to set off into space to look for himself. You know what? I think it changed my mind. I wish you lo- Oh no, it sounds like the PJ Masks are in trouble! This is a catastrophe! It appears Gecko's really struggling to keep hold of the HQ rocket. Hold on guys, this is going to be a rough landing. Try and keep it level, Gecko. The landing gear's coming down. Lift the nose, Gecko! More power! More power! Deploy the shoot! Phew, that was close! That didn't seem natural at all, it was though somebody was pulling him in towards the moon! So I think we'd better go and do a reconnaissance mission and try and find out who it was. But while I've got your attention, let's get the Rocket HQ back on its feet. And whilst I'm at it, I can give you a quick tour. Oh, and I'd better put my space helmet on as well, there's no oxygen up here. Oh, that's better. Boys and girls, welcome to the first PJ Masks Lunar Landing and presenting their new HQ rocket ship. Hmm, it looks like gremlins have nicked my letter R's. Moving on, let's start by pulling out the Try Me tab. Nice. Looking at the details first, we have the afterburner at the back of the ship and eagle-shaped wings at the side with one color for each PJ mask. On the top, we have a nicely detailed red button which when pressed gives you an array of lights and sounds in analog. Underneath the vessel we have the very familiar looking PJ Masks totem pole with symbols for Owlet, Catboy and that little green one, Gecko. Underneath the hood we have the main cockpit. With pilots removed we have three seats. One green, one red, one blue. A big computer screen. A steering wheel. A cuddly toy. Just kidding. Below the cockpit, a grey button. Let's press it. Wow, look at that moon rover. Simply turn the lever to release the vehicle. There goes my job. Yes guys, how can I help you? What do we do now? What do we do now? Exactly. Uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to go home. All the action's taking place up on the moon. Oh, mate, what sort of a YouTube channel is this? This is not good, I must leave. The special Lord Miller wouldn't do this. Dinnerbag Cave. Tough crowd. And by the looks of it, these guys can't wait to try out their new moon rovers. Right, but whilst these lot are off enjoying themselves, why don't we go and do a little bit of reconnaissance of our own? Come on, follow me. Lunar Girl. I knew it. And what's that she's got in her hand? It appears to be some sort of lunar staff which is now radiating some sort of magical orb and creating some sort of lunar fortress. I can only assume it's this which has caused the moon to fall out of orbit. The PJ Masks are really going to have their work cut out with this new power. Oh, wait a minute, if we haven't got enough to worry about already. Where's this coming from? The space shuttle launch bay. Wait a minute, that's not who I think it is, is it? It is, it's the Wolfie Kids in a stolen bus. And how did they get in there so fast? Well, I never. The Wolfie Kids are so desperate to invade the PJ Masks HQ that they're actually going into space to do it. Oh no, and it looks as though Rip's already having difficulty controlling the shuttle. Wait a minute, she isn't. She's been dragged into the wormhole. This is very bad news for the PJ Masks, but the Wolfie Kids aren't safe either. Remember what I said about wormholes, children? Here we go. Yes, it looks like they're going to appear at the moon. No. Last minute they've switched to Mars. 
And if you think things couldn't have got worse for them, it now appears that they've been abducted by aliens too. Ah yes, exogenies. The only problem is I don't know if they're friend or foe. Hmm. And I don't understand alien either. Well guys, I'm gonna have to go and join the PJ Masks. I wish you good luck. What's this? They've already taken Luna Girl down. Oh, well done, guys. I'm just sorry I missed it. Hey, partner, look down here. We watched the whole thing. My good friend here documented in a comic book. So you move on now and get a cup of tea. And I'll fill in the young deputies here and what happened. Uh, wonderful. Uh, thank you, random Lego cowboy. This here is a tale about a sheriff. Ooh, and a lone bandit. Hee-haw. It was high noon as the bandit stood on the prairie of the moon. She knew the new sheriff in town was coming, for she had foresight from her lunar wand. And the fact she'd seen him out on a morning ride. But we'll forget about that. And so the sheriff rode in on his trusty steed. But the bandit, she was waited. Ooh, I'll tell you this, it didn't look good for the new sheriff. For the bandit had him encased in some sort of magical lunar fortress. I don't understand it, I don't want to understand it, but he was stuck. But then, out of nowhere, came his partner. I'm gonna pump you full lead. Ooh, she had that look in her eye, I can tell you. She could do things with that steed I'd never seen before. So much so, she took out the bandit with a single shot. Followed by a perfect landing. And some sort of 180 skid I've never seen before in my life. But that girl's got stuck. And without even blinking an eye, she returned to where the bandit was set. And that good-for-nothing friend of hers just showed up at the end. I mean, who is this cat boy, anyway? I never heard of him. Anyway, so the bandit sat, alone and defeated, with that Luna wand just fizzling away. And then she said something which I don't understand, but maybe you will. You big best ruin everything! And here lies the story of Deputy Owlet and the Luna Bandit. This is what legends are made of. Just like that fella. British Bob. Ah, thank you, stranger. Anytime. Oh, wait a minute, what have we got going on here now? With that Lunar 1 destroyed, it looks though like something's happening to the moon. Just look at the way it's shaking. I hope it doesn't explode. Well, this looks like the moment of truth, boys and girls. Keep your eye on the moon. Ah, there you go. It's back in its usual orbit once more. So with everything as it should be, the PJ Masks returned to Earth. Which made the nighttime villains very happy. They now have something to do with their evenings. As a stroke of good fortune, the PJ Masks also happened to find Rocket Boy floating in space and brought him safely back home. Well done guys. And I don't know about you, but that's definitely cause for a celebration. And what better way to do it than with a cup of tea. Cheers! Ta -da! And with the wonderful news of Rocket Boy now being safely back on the ground, he now had the task of giving the not so good news to his friends that the world was in fact round. Let's just say they could have taken it better. You can't win them all. Well boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed going on a super moon adventure here with me today. Please remember to comment and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Oh and if you're worried about the wolfy kids, don't be. Those aliens were friendly after all and you can see them bringing them back to Earth as we speak.